O you who believe, be mindful of Allah as He deserves to be. And don't die without having surrendered. We begin by praising Allah, and we can't praise Him enough. Our praise falls short. And then we thank Allah, and our thank falls short. Our thanks falls short. We can't thank Him enough. Sometimes we forget that we need Allah. And then we remind ourselves that we weren't made for this world. This world is, we're just visit, visitors. And our home and our true abode and our true, our true resting place, our true domicile and residence is not here. We're only visitors. And we warn ourselves that we are returning to our maker. We are returning to our creator who may question us how we lived our life, how we spent our time, how we earned our money, how we treated our wife, how we treated our husband, how we honored our parents. If we called our mother, if we called our father, if we help the oppressed, if we help those in need, we're returning to our maker to see how we did in this life. But right now, my brothers, gentlemen, my community, my fellow children of Adam, my sisters, we're still alive. We can still read another page of Qur'an. We can still make another habit. We can still break another habit. But when we, when we pass and we die, we can't read another page of Qur'an. We can't donate another dollar. We can't read another Surah Al-Kahf on Friday. We can't start another habit. We can't break another habit. We can't call our mom one more time. We can't call our father one more time. We can't treat our wife any more gentle. Our time is up. We can't seek forgiveness from someone we harm. After we die, it's too late. We can't mend relationships between two brothers that are fighting. It's too late, we passed. After we die, we can't ask someone for forgiveness. We can't fix a relationship that has been broken. It's too late. But right now we can. Right now you can donate another dollar. Right now you can start another habit. Right now you can read another book. Right, can, right now you can honor another scholar. Right now you can help another institution. But one day, it'll be too late. One day, that door is closed. That access has ceased. And that's a reality, an unavoidable reality for all of us. Right now, we can improve our character. We can become more gentle. We can become more soft. We can become more loving. We can become more patient. We can become more caring. Right now, we can do that. We can overlook the people who hurt us. We still have that. We can still enhance our character. We can still, we can, we can still do that before we meet our maker before the test is done, before this journey is complete, while we still have breaths remaining that are being counted down, like on a countdown timer. We still have the opportunity to teach our kids to do dhikr with our family, to make someone laugh, to smile to someone. But one day, those opportunities will be gone. But when you leave from this Friday gathering, this Friday prayer, 
you can still make an intention to read a jizit of the Quran every month. You can still make intention, I will be a better husband. You can still make intention that I will be a better son or daughter. You can make intention that that person, you can still make up with someone. But one day, for all of us, that opportunity will no longer exist. And we don't want to be in that moment of death and a, a moment of remorse, a moment of regret. Why didn't I? I could have. I should have. What stopped me? The dunya distracted me. The devil deluded me. But I had the chance. I had the opportunity. And right now, today, we have that opportunity. Today, you can leave here and you can send money anywhere in the world to any suffering person in the world, to any suffering Muslim in the world. Have you sent any money to Syria, the suffering orphans or the suffering starving families, or to Palestine, or to Yemen, or to the many places in the world? Our khair, our goodness should reach everywhere should reach everywhere. We should have a part of goodness in everywhere. We should have a part of, of goodness in dhikr, a part of goodness in gentleness, a part of goodness in Quran. Our dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ وَاعِظَيْنِ صَامِطًا وَنَاطِقًا فَالصَّامِطُ Al-Mawt wa Natiqu Al-Qur'an. I left with you two warners. One that is silent and one that is out loud, that speaks. And the silent one is death. Our dear Prophet Sallallahu said, I left you with two warners. A silent one and a verbal one. The silent one is death, and the verbal one is the Qur'an. It's a warner. Our dear Prophet ﷺ said, min dhikri Increase in your remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures. Death. Our Prophet ﷺ said, يَا عَجَبًا كُلَّ الْعَجْبِ لِلْمُصَدِّقِ بِدَارِ الْخُلُودِ وَهُوَ يَسْعَى لِدَارِ الْغُرُورِ How strange is it? How strange of the strange is it? How weird, it's so weird. How wondrous, it's so wondrous. That for the one who believes in the, in the abode, in the home of forever, yet he's striving so much for the abode of the temporary. This world, dunya mazra'atul akhirah. This world we plant so we can harvest over there. They asked one of the righteous salihin, why is it that we hate to, 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 to depart to the next life? And he said, Ammartum dunyakum wa kharrabtum akhiratakum fa karihtum an takhruju min al-amar ila al-kharab. He said, you built your life and you destroyed your afterlife. So you don't want to go from the built to the destroyed. And right now, we can build our afterlife. We can decorate our grave. We can decorate it with good character. We can plant trees with dhikr and tasbih. Because that home is forever and that's waiting for us. And this is the abode of delusion. It hypnotizes us and religion is an alarm clock. And so every Friday we come to say, Ya Allah, you are why I live. You are what I seek. You are who I want. I live for you. And we make adjustments every Friday to remember the truth with, and perspective and the reality that this life, we're all leaving. And every Friday we read in Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18 in the Quran, verse 7 and 8. Inna ja'alna ma'ala al-ardi zinatan laha li nabluwahum. Ayyuhum ahsanu amala.
وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا In one verse he says we what we gave you on this entire earth and this entire world is an ornament, a decoration to test you who's going to do the best actions, the best work. And in the next verse, وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا And we're going to make it all dust and crumble. <laughs> in the next verse, everything is going to crumble. All of the square feet, all of the mansions, all, all of the mansions and the palaces and everything, it's all done. And then we go to the next life. And then we get the true palaces. We get the true reward. We get the true victory. And that's why we, that's what we live for. And that's what we're committed to. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَأَسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Seek forgiveness from Allah. He is indeed, forgi He indeed forgives all sins. الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه قل إن الموت الذي التي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم say death that you are trying to flee from and run away from indeed it's going to find you that death is going to find each and every one of us they asked Sayyidina Ali Sayyidina Ali said there are the children, there are the sons of the, of the world, and there are the sons of the next world. Sons of the dunya and sons of the akhirah. And he said, he said, the dunya is in front of you and coming towards you. I'm sorry. The next life is in front of you, coming towards you. And the dunya is behind you, running away from you. So stop chasing, so be of the sons of the next life. Because you'll never catch the dunya and you'll never escape the akhirah. So be of the sons of the akhirah. That's what we chase. That's what we crave. And remembrance of death spoils love of dunya. Doing a meditation on our reality that these breaths are being counted and they're diminishing and there's only a, num a numbered quantity remaining. It's doing a meditation on that. And that those who I know have passed away, they've been in their grave for one week, for one month, for one year, for one decade. And what happened to them and what happened to their dreams and their hopes and their businesses and their lives and what happened to their families and what happened to them? Doing a meditation on them spoils the love of this dunya. And we, we need to be in the dunya, but not of the dunya. We need to be in the dunya, but not of the dunya. We need to be here in the pro pro prophetic Muhammadan way, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and plant for our afterlife. And be a millionaire and be a billionaire, that's fine, but put the money in your pocket, not in your heart. My daughter once asked me, Baba, when Teslas were really new and exciting, can I go in the Tesla? I said, your body can go in the Tesla, but the Tesla can't go in your heart. That's fine. But not in our heart, because our heart is, belongs to Allah, belongs to God, belongs to things that will never, will never die, will never vanish, will never crumble, will never become dust. The everlasting, that's what our heart belongs to. So when we go into our grave, we're not missing the things that crumbled and become dust. Because we took them with us. We took them with us in our heart. We're not going to miss anything of this dunya. And so I conclude with this, that in our modernity, in our modern era, in our culture, we have all been told a lie. And this is the lie that all of us are entitled, are entitled. And all of us are entitled to our comfort and our perfection. And this is the lie of our time and our culture. 
And this is causing anxiety and causing depression and causing the things that come from that. And we need to reset this because Allah promises us in the Quran that this is a life of difficulty. A dunya darul bala. This is a domain. The dunya is a domain of difficulty. And we need to reset this understanding and perspective that when we're patient in the dunya, we'll get rewarded in the paradise. That we're not entitled to perfection here. And what happens is when we train ourselves and our children that you're entitled to perfect shoes, perfect socks. You don't like your socks, they're uncomfortable, change it. You're uncomfortable with your shoes, change it. You're uncomfortable with your jacket, change it. With your sandwich, change it. With the restaurant, change it. With your school, change it. With your car, change it. And then eventually with your spouse, change it. With your religion. We need to understand that this is a, a place that we need. We are patient and we have acceptance and contentment and rida. We're not entitled to perfection like the filters on Snapchat tell us like we are entitled because the filter makes my cheekbones perfect. That's a lie. That my coffee is perfect because I have nine types of milk I can order from in Starbucks. I'm entitled to my perfect coffee, my perfect burrito. <laughs> I'm entitled to my perfect everything because I can return anything to Amazon and Costco. Because I'm entitled to my customized... Per no, this is a lie. And this lie leads us to unhappiness. We are going to test you. We are going to test you with this and this and this. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيِّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا I created life and death to test you. Who's going to be the best of you in actions and works? So this lie is important because Islam is the recipe for happiness. Islam is the recipe for happiness. And we understand that this entitlement to perfection is a lie of our culture and we need to understand that so we can raise ourselves our families our children and protect them from this anxiety and from this depression and from all this all this all this pain all this pain right because and so this this is our message today that we are here for a temporary moment that death is going to find us no matter what, and let's prepare for that moment. So it's a moment of birth into a next life. It's a moment of continuation, of see you later. It's a moment of celebration, not that we hate life. Muslims don't hate life, but it's a moment of being reunited with your beloved. Where the veils can be lifted, and, and now you can see your beloved. Throughout all the years here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, we can't see we have this limitation because of our nature of creation. And then these veils get lifted, and we can see. So we yearn to see our beloved. And whoever yearns to see his beloved, Allah yearns to see him. And whoever hates to see Allah, Allah hates to see him. And so we yearn to see Allah and his be beloved messenger and our beloved messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. غَدًا نَلْقَ الْأَحِبَّ مُحَمَّدًا وَصُحْبًا Tomorrow we will see our beloveds, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. May we be reunited, inshallah, in gentleness. Ameen, 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 ameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت يا الله يا الله we ask you to forgive us all of us in this moment. Ya Allah, we ask you to cleanse us, to purify us, to illuminate us, to let us be from your beloveds. We ask you to let us be from your awliya, from your close friends, from your saints. We ask you to elevate our community, to elevate our ummah, to reunite our hearts, to give us the strength to see the opportunity of life as moments to draw near to you, as moments to rectify our character, as moments to be gentle to our wives, as moments to be gentle to our husbands, moments to honor our teachers, our scholars as moments to massage our parents feet
as moments to increase in knowledge, to read another book, to do another dhikr, another tasbiha, to read another page of Qur'an. Ya Allah, give us victory and don't let this dunya distract us. Don't let this dunya hypnotize us. Don't let the shaitan, the devil, delude us. Ya Allah, let us live for you, breathe for you, walk for you, die for you. Let us use our tongue only for you, Ya Allah. Let us use our eyes only for you, Ya Allah, our ears only for you. Ya Allah, we ask you for everything good that our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked you for. We seek protection from every harm he sought protection from. And Ya Allah, we ask you, when we die, let it be a moment, Ya Allah, not of pain, not of suffering, not of remorse, not of regret, Ya Allah. But when, we re when we're reunited with you, let, us be, let it be a moment of celebration, Ya Allah. A moment of happiness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, this world is temporary. Take it out of our hearts. Don't let us love this dunya. Don't let us love this dunya. Don't let us love this dunya. Help us love the akhirah. Help us love the akhirah. Help us love the Quran. Help us love Islam. Help us love our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Help us love you. Help us enjoy the sweetness of saying your name. Help us love our parents and honor our parents. Help us love goodness, Ya Allah. Ameen, and be gentle with us. Bring us closer to you with gifts and caresses of love, caresses of love Ya Allah. Don't let us be chained with the shackles, uh, the shackles of misfortune, Ya Allah. Bring us closer to you with gentleness. Ameen, 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 Ameen. And send peace and blessings on our Master, Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa salli Allahumma ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhal qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal Remember Allah and He will remember you.